Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin PF, and on today's episode, we're going to be hitting the Deanston Virgin Oak. Now, this is a pretty decently priced dram. In the UK, it's around £35, and for that, you're getting an ABV of 46.3%. And on top of that, that means that we're not getting any chill filtration, and this is also no added colour. So, all good things. Some people, some purists would maybe say that uh, because it's a no age statement that should be ignored, but hopefully over the course of this video you'll see why you should definitely not ignore it and maybe even it be your first into the Deanston kind of core range journey. A little bit about Deanston first, it's a Highland distillery but only just, it really is like <laughs> on the border on that divide if you have a look on the maps, just outside of the town called Stirling and it's owned by Distel as of 2013. Distel also own things like uh, Bonnerhaven and Le Chague and Tobu Mori. Those are some pretty good brands, so we know we're in good company right there. Now, it's called Virgin Oak, and no, no age statement, because it is aged in their usual way, but then uh, towards the end of the maturation process, they take the liquid out and they finish it in Virgin American Oak. So it's not the whole maturation period, and the reason why they, I guess they don't do that is because uh, if, if you know anything about bourbon, for, for example, that's a great example of what happens with virgin oak. Just after two years in virgin oak, you get this really, really intense oaky flavour that works really, really well for corn distillate and, and rye distillate, stuff like that. But for pure barley, double distilled, maybe even triple distilled, wherever in scotch, you know, it's a very light new make, depending on where you go. But uh, if you apply that to virgin oak, chances are that after a good three years, which is the minimum obviously in Scotland, it's going to have overpowered those original flavours and all you're going to get is the kind of oakiness, which would impart a good flavour for sure, probably, but it's, it's not going to create much diversity through the range. So we're talking about a finished whisky rather than a full term whisky. Very important to note. Obviously this isn't an age statement, so we're thinking it must be around about sort of five, six, seven, eight years, something like that. You know, they're gonna mix several years together to, to create the batches of this. But we really don't know, you know, that information isn't available and it's a shame that they don't release it, but you know, we're stuck in this kind of cycle of needing age statements, so that's the reason why they don't put it on there. Now, let's get into the nose of this and see if it really is worth the money. Uh, the nose is, is really big and bold. It's For me, it's a lot of vanilla, touch of citrusy on there, kind of that's more lemony on the lemony side of the citrus. But it's sweet as well. Now, I thought I smelled like apples, but it isn't like a fresh apples, like an orchard apples. It's more like like an apple pie or an apple crumble, something like that. So there's that extra cereally sweetness, sugary note to it as well. Really nice, really nice. Let's try on the palette. Now again, big bold flavours. Loads more vanilla, oakiness. A little bit of um, honey, kind of a bit of sweetness in there and more of those apple notes coming through. And I can't get away from that um, sensation of, of like an apple crumble. Um, I'm not sure if that goes around worldwide, but that's a, a very, very British pudding to have. But yeah, try it if you ever get the chance. Just the apple one, no fancy stuff. And uh, that's the kind of, that's the kind of flavors I'm getting out of this. Mm. And a finish. Once that kind of sweetness has disappeared, kind of spiciness comes out of it and it's um it's not really like a kind of peppery spice it's more of like a cinnamony nutmeg kind of spicy very very light and not overpowering at all but it's very lingering it's got a long old finish you don't feel it down here you feel it in the mouth mm. now for me 35 pounds is an absolute steal for that now for some the difficulty is going to come from the 12 year old Unfortunately, I don't have that to do a comparison today, but when I do review the uh, the 12 eventually, I'll hark back to this video and sort of compare my two ideas then, but it's a very, very, very similar price in the UK at least. Maybe two or three pounds more than you would expect to pay for this. So a lot of people are gonna ask the question, why buy this when 
I can buy the 12 year and actual age statement for just a few pounds more? Well, the answer really is that kind of new oak finish. If you're into your kind of big, bold flavors, uh, especially if you're a bourbon person, right? So if you like your bourbons and you're looking for something uh, that, that kind of bridges that gap, I know a lot of bourbons don't like scotch and vice versa, but I think this would be the better one to go towards first. It's got a, got a, a slightly bolder flavor in my opinion, but I don't want to go too much into the 12. Really, it's going to be a coin flip for a lot of people, I imagine. So that's my advice. Flip the coin and just pick one. I don't think you're going to be disappointed either way. Terrible thing to say. Those are some... Blah. Delete that. <laughs>